Hello everyone. In this short video we're going to take a look at editing a custom subassembly that is already in use in an existing corridor model. So we're basically going to go back to subassembly composer where this subassembly was created, make edits, bring it back into the drawing, update my tool palette, and then have it update my corridor without recreating pieces of my assembly. So what we have here, we have three custom subassemblies and they're all in use in this assembly at the top. At the bottom here we have a cross-section view. The one that we're going to make some edits to is called shoulder with taper. If I click on it here you can see that one. And if I go to the codes tab you can see there's no shape codes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a shape code to that. We're going to kind of assume we forgot that. And then we're going to actually uh, edit the geometry a bit also. So notice I'm going to rebuild make sure my corridor is in sync. And I'm going to save. And then I'm just going to exit Civil 3D. Okay. So now I have the custom subassembly open in Subassembly Composer. First thing we're going to do is make that shape change. If I go to the actual shape, we built the shape, but we didn't code it at all. So let's just type in code for concrete. And now let's add a little bit of geometry onto the end. So I'm going to add a point, and I'm going to drop it six inches below. And I'm going to auto add the link. That's good. And I'm going to add another link between 0.4 and 6. Good. And I'm going to create a shape for that area. And I'm going to code it the same with CONC. There we go. So now we can do a file save. So the key here is I did not change the internal subassembly name. The external, I didn't do a save as. If you do that, if you change the internal name, if you change the external, if you save it as a different PKT file, you can use it, but you have to delete what you have in that assembly and send that one back in because it'll be a new ID in the file. So we're done with the shoulder with taper. Let's exit the composer. Okay. So now the key, we're going to go back into Civil 3D, but we're going to go into an empty drawing. So on the tool palette here, I have my custom tool palette tab. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that existing shoulder with taper by right clicking and delete it. There we go. So that one's out. What I like to do, and you don't have to do this, I've had success without doing this, but I like to actually exit again. So I've removed that off the toolbar. Now I'm going to go back into Civil 3D. We're going to go ahead and insert that uh, subassembly again. It's really the same one, same name. We're going to insert it again before we go into the model. So I'm going to right click on the tab and go to Import Subassemblies. And I'm going to pick Shoulder with Taper, Open. Drop it on the custom palette. And after I bring it in, I'm just going to right click and do Refresh Image. Let it sync up. Now we're ready to open the corridor drawing. Okay, so you can see the corridor, it, it doesn't even see that it's out of sync. So if you do a rebuild here, it's not going to rebuild with that new one yet because it hasn't seen any changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Subassembly Properties and let's just look at it for a second. Let's go to Shape Code. Notice the Shape Code's already showing up, so that's a good sign. So let's just hit OK. And you can see just by going into the subassembly properties, it uh, it's already seeing that geometry change or edit. And I'm just going to right click rebuild the corridor. And that'll actually rebuild the section views as well. So there's other ways to accomplish this, but I just wanted to show a quick tip that's that's worked in the past for a lot of customers to kind of safely be able to change out that same PKT or custom subassembly and not interrupt your corridor workflow. So I hope this has been a benefit. Have a great day.